Hi, this is Rachel here from Offroad CC. With lots of time out of the office this summer, I've had an enforced break from regular YouTube videos, but I'm back now and into the full swing of things. So the latest bike I've been testing is this women's stump jumper comp alloy. So this is the 27 and a half inch wheeled bike and it's got 150 mil of suspension front and rear. Both the men's and the women's bike in this spec are similar, aside from the women's specific parts of the Myth 155 mil saddle, narrower bars, slimmer grips and of course the women's RX tune on the fork and shock but I'll talk more about that later. The men get bikes in frame size small to extra large whereas women get an option of an extra small but no extra large. The frame is an alloy one as the name suggests and it features a threaded bottom bracket and full internal cable routing which is some of the neatest I've ever seen so check out that there. Suspension is from Fox. There's a Fox Float Rhythm 34 fork with a grip damper and a Fox Float DPS performance shock at the rear. The shock gets a low speed rebound adjustment and also the three possession compression adjustment lever which gives you a fully open mode, a trail mode and a closed option. At this price point, Specialized have picked out a Shimano SLX 11 speed drivetrain paired with a 32 tooth chain ring and for this size medium bike, 170mm race face effect crankset. Stopping also comes courtesy of Shimano with SLX brakes, although next season's comp spec bikes will see SRAM Guide R brakes and an NX Eagle 12 speed drivetrain for just 100 quid more. The next season bikes are in stock now, and so as soon as these 11 speed models have sold through, the Alloy Comp Stumpy will be 12 speed and will cost you £2,600. This bike, as it is, has special Roval Traverse wheel set with a just about wide enough 20mm diameter internal width, and that's fitted up with 2.6 inch butcher tyre at front and a 2.6 inch purgatory at the rear, which is a combination that should see you through most weather conditions unless it gets really, really mucky. Lastly, there's an extrusion manic dropper post. And whilst our test post, sorry, our test bike has 125 mil dropper, the medium bikes and above get 150 mil posts. This little lot adds up to 31.3 pounds, so 14.1 kilos, which I didn't think was too bad at all. Value for money, money isn't outstanding for the cheaper stump jumper, but it is on par with the likes of Giant with their Trance, Norco and Merida. And with the Stumpy, you do get a nicely made frame that looks great and, Specialized say, is stiffer than previous bikes due to that new asymmetrical frame design. It certainly felt like a nimble, accurate bike, but I'm not sure in this medium frame size that the difference between previous stump jumpers I've ridden and my test bike was immediately discernible. There is potential that larger frames have benefited more from this stif stiffness upgrade and that can only be a good thing. On the comp model, there's also no SWAT integration on this low-end bike, although you do get that nifty ridge chainstay protector, which all but silences chain slap when riding. Riding the women's stumpy in the first instance was a rather lacklustre affair. The bike felt a bit sluggish and wallowy. Um, it's a characteristic I fix by altering the volume reducers in the fork and shock. So the women's RX tune on these stumpies sees the bike come fitted with a smaller reducer in the shock than the men's bike and none in the fork. So in the shock, I swapped out the volume reducer from the yellow one, which is 0.6 cubic inch to a red one, which is 0.95 cubic inches. I also inserted two volume reducers into the fork when, and that was supplied with none, as I said. So this transformed the bike into a much livelier ride with more mid-stroke support and end-stroke ramp up in the shock whilst retaining small bump sensitivity. The fork felt better for its changes too. It didn't dive through the travel so much, or so quickly, and it also allowed me to learn, run a little less pressure which kept a more supple feel. With the suspension sorted, the women's stumpy I was now effectively riding was a bike tuned more akin to the men's version. Climbing on the bike is deceptively good for a bike that has a 75 degree seat angle, or that's 74.5 degrees if you run the bike in the low position. And the good climbing is a fact I put down to a light build. It certainly doesn't have figures on paper that might make it a good climber, such as longer chain stays or a long wheelbase. But whatever the reason is, the stumpy is genuinely sprightly uphill. Although 
switch that shock compression lever to trail rather than open mode and it's even better. So that increase in low speed compression takes away some of the bob that appears when you really crank hard. Uh, it's, an, it's an inherent specialised trait and a trade-off for a generally very active and grip inducing suspension design. The Stumpy in this aloe form is a light ride but one that still offers plenty of grip. Take it downhill and the effect of that specialised FSR linkage is immediately noticeable. It's initially supple and where stump jumpers of old were renowned for lacking mid-stroke support, the 2019 linkage has been improved along with my further alteration of volume reducers. The fork in this 150mm form isn't the stiffest but it is light and it's commonplace for a bike of this spec and trail intentions. The geometry of the Stumpy turns its hand to playful rather than fast. The reach at 435mm, that's my medium bike in the high position, is erring on the side of short for a 150mm travel trail bike. It's a conservative number and coupled with relatively short chainstays at 432mm um, and the wheelbase of 1179, it means the bike's capable over most trails in my local vicinity of the Forest of Dean. But crank up much speed or launch into a steeper downhill section and the Stumpy felt quickly out of its depth and it certainly loses some of its composure. Descending on the Stump Jumper is best approached in a playful manner. It's a hoot with its low bottom bracket to sling into corners. Um, it seems the Stump Jumper is the definitive all-rounder for those that aren't into radical progressive geometry. So it'll pedal all day, it'll be really comfortable and it'll hit up any manner of trails in style as long as you're happy to keep a check on the speed. So if you'd rather be creative than fast, this could be the bike. Comparisons with other 150mm travel bikes, so the Giant Trance, the YT Jeff C and the 27.5 inch model and the Norco Sight, prove that Specialized isn't bucking the trend with their geometry. All these bikes have identical reach figures and very similar geometry in general. It seems to be the current train of thought with some bike manufacturers that this is the ideal long travel trail bike and that's how geometry should look in this category. So whilst these bikes continue to sell, I think they could all benefit from being stretched out a little and turned into absolute rippers capable of more competent descending as well as some long trailblazing adventures. The Stump Jumper does seem a little left behind today's more progressive bike brands. It's a long travel trail bike that should absolutely rip, yet the geometry is just holding it back slightly. The slack head angle and amount of travel all point towards a bike that should have aggressive attentions, but the typical riding of this stump jumper is likely to be much tamer. It's a bike that's much happier taking things a little slower and jibbing about or taking on long missions rather than lapping out trails on steep hillsides. So for a full review of this stumpy in writing, head over to Offroad CC and thanks very much for watching.